After looking at the Cost of an Action website for a bit, you may be asking yourself, why exactly do I need this? If you have audiovisual collections, regardless of whether you're a formal archive, a corporation, a production company, or any other type of organization, the Cost of an Action calculator can help you perform analysis and make informed decisions. We'll get into the details of that, but first, let's start with the end. The end of what? Well, the end of physical audiovisual media, such as VHS, audio cassette, open reel tapes, Betacam SP. The end of these things is something that most organizations with holdings of legacy AV collections recognize in some way, but it's still a general notion, maybe something for the next person to worry about. But when you add a reference point and you put the end on the horizon, it tends to get a bit more attention. There have been several articles over recent years from major news outlets talking about the obsolescence and degradation of physical audiovisual media. But still, people wax philosophical and get into theoretical conversations about the relative virtues of film over tape or grooved media over optical disc. Or people put stock into innovation or technical heroism swooping in to save us at the last minute. In unfortunate circumstances such as natural disasters, we find that the threat of the end is thrust upon us suddenly. It's remarkable the amazing stories that come out of disasters like this, of people springing into action and sparing no amount of effort to save what are recognized in these moments as priceless cultural materials. A particularly interesting thing is the contrast between the perspective that is found at a moment like this compared to the perspective on the longer-term disaster that is playing out in front of us. The longer-term disaster being degradation and obsolescence of physical audiovisual media. This quote is from 2006, and things have changed in much more dramatic ways than anticipated at that point. We would now say within one generation. And we would revise this to say short term instead of mid to long term. And this is from the National Recording Preservation Plan that was years in the making and published in 2013. And while this gives an optimistic 15 to 20 year window, others, like Richard Wright, are more pessimistic. General consensus among experts as of 2013 was 10 to 15 years. Since it's 2014 now, let's call it 14 years. But saying 14 years is tricky because people have a way of continuing to say 14 years even after several years have passed. So let's put a number to it. Let's call it 2028. But it's imperative that we take the perspective found at a moment like this and we apply it to this longer timeline. Because there are many organizations that would spring into action in the face of a sudden disaster but currently stand by without acting while the longer-term disaster plays out in front of us. Imagine if all of your materials were in a disaster today. Stakeholders and caretakers should ask themselves, would I do everything I could to save my collection? Would I raise funds to rescue the collection? How much would I do and spend before I thought it was too much? Would I be inspired or shamed by the passion of others to save my collection? These questions are as relevant to the longer timeline as they are to being hit with a sudden disaster. We need to take the response that arises out of these moments and apply it to the time between now and 2028, because this is not a marathon at this point for most organizations. It is truly a sprint. But it's also true that the task at hand can be overwhelming and we can't take an all or nothing approach. This report from the Blue Ribbon Task Force on Sustainable Digital Preservation and Access is a really important work that helps us navigate these realities. The report tells us that a common and misleading perception is that we either do all or nothing, forever or never. Or one important thing that the Blue Ribbon Task Force report talks a lot about is this concept of maintaining the option. That we don't have to make a choice to preserve something forever or never. Forever is not a concept that anyone has an easy time with, particularly not those charged with budgeting and decision making. Instead, we can think about providing the minimal amount necessary to simply maintain the option. And we can think in periods of five or 10 years, with each period being an opportunity to assess and decide whether or not we want to do nothing, do the minimal amount necessary to maintain the option to decide again later, or to do much more than the minimum for the collection, in part or in whole. Under any circumstance, it's imperative to avoid the paralysis that strikes when we think about very large things in black and white terms. It's not all or nothing. It's not forever or never. However, what we do require is immediacy because we're up against a wall between now and 2028. We have to start acting immediately. Underlying all of this is the issue of prioritization, which Indiana University talks about in an articulate and significant way in these two reports. Prioritization and the need to make informed decisions is a core tenet of IU's work. 
This is a slide from Mike Casey, Director of Media Preservation Services at Indiana University, giving a high-level overview on their methodology for prioritization, which has been incorporated into applications called Media Score and Media Rivers. But regardless, an effort like this takes resources, and a point where efforts to preserve content and archives often fall short is within higher levels of organizations, where the topic that always creeps in is return on investment and opportunities for direct monetization. Rightfully so, decision makers want to know, if we put funding behind digitization, can we recoup our costs, or maybe we can even make money through monetization? In fact, in most cases, and for a number of reasons, using ROI as a metric and direct monetization as a justification fails to speak to the benefits and value derived from the effort, including supportive mission and the effectiveness and quality of serving clients. Not only that, but the real expense graph doesn't look like this, where expense begins at zero before digitization begins. It looks like this. Notice that the line doesn't start at zero, and it doesn't ascend and then descend. The reality is that the investment started years ago. Investments in collections don't start today with digitization, and they don't go away once digitization is done. Collections have had investments in staff, facilities, management, administration, moves, rehousing, consulting, assessments, and in some cases, production and acquisition. And as a principle of archiving and preservation, organizations will continue to manage physical collections after digitization is done. So it's critical to recognize the investment made to date and the ongoing investment made for physical collections in addition to the cost of digitization, storage, and more. Once we come to this understanding, the question of return on investment becomes less relevant and the question about the cost of an action becomes much more relevant. The COI calculator helps organizations analyze the financial and intellectual cost of an action. The cost of an action calculator allows you to create multiple scenarios and to compare them. For instance, moving either the start date for digitization or the annual digitization budget, and being able to assess the outcomes for those different scenarios. But COI is not an argument to digitize everything. It's a tool that aims to enable action by quantifying the issues in both financial and intellectual terms in order to inform decision making. It's also not about bringing a robust preservation and access infrastructure to bear for everything that is prioritized. As the Blue Ribbon Task Force report emphasizes, it's about maintaining the option to make a decision in the future. For instance, referencing the National Digital Stewardship Alliance levels of digital preservation, offering a level one environment is much more obtainable, and it does maintain the option to make decisions about how to allocate resources for preservation and access later. Doing nothing, though, leads to permanent loss, and all options are taken away. There is a cost of an action, Calculating that cost helps approach conversations and decision-making in a well-informed way and helps understand the implications of various scenarios. So use the COI calculator to analyze what the cost is for your organization. Enter in details about your collections and some other basic planning information and review the outcomes. Export the charts and the reporting. And sign up for an account to save multiple projects and compare different scenarios. And signing up for an account also allows you to share with others. We hope that this has explained why the cost of an action calculator was created and how it can help you in your planning and decision making. Find the calculator along with helpful information on how to use it at coi.avpreserve.com. We would love to hear how you're using it as well as any other feedback you may have. Please reach out to us at coi.avpreserve.com. And thanks.